Hey everybody, Jazzy here. Today I want to show you how to set up a Don't Starve Together dedicated server in Windows. So usually you start a game by opening up Don't Starve Together and clicking on this host game button, but a dedicated server actually runs the server separate from the client. There's a lot of benefits to running a dedicated server, but to me the most obvious one is that the host does not have to be actively in the game, which it frees up computer resources and it makes the game more accessible to other players that might not share the same time zone as you. Dedicated servers can be installed on any computer, it doesn't require the DST client, it doesn't even need Steam installed. Dedicated servers are also generally more versatile than client hosted games, so you can do some more manipulation of like swapping in different shards or maps or even adding a third or fourth shard to your world. One last thing before we start, if all this information seems too technical to you, or if you just think that your computer might not be up to the task of hosting a dedicated server, sometimes paying a little bit to rent a game server can be worth the price. I'm partnered with Nodecraft, who has a very intuitive user interface, and before that I was paying for a server through GTX. And trust me, when you're making your own server and something goes wrong, you're gonna really miss that support chat feature. So check them out if this interests you, and if you do go with renting a server, be sure to use my Nodecraft promo code. It's a nice way of supporting the channel and getting your server at a discount all at the same time. Okay, anyways, here's how we set up a dedicated server on our own computer, and I will post a link to the quick setup guide on the Clay forums. First thing we gotta do is download and install Steam Command. If you click on this link, it will take you to the page of Steam Command. You scroll down, and the download link is right here. So we're gonna save it and click to open it and then we're going to drop it into a folder where we're gonna install Steam Command. Steam Command is basically a command user interface, kind of like DOS, except it interacts with Steam apps. So we're gonna use this to manage our dedicated server. All right, I'm gonna pop this on my second hard drive under a folder called Steam Command. And inside the folder, we're just gonna double click and get it running. And the first time you run this, it's just going to extract all the files and set up Steam Command on your computer. And once you get the command prompt, that means Steam Command has been successfully installed. You can go ahead and X out of the window. Okay, at this point we're ready to start generating all the config files for our dedicated server. And luck would have it, Clay provides us an interface for automatically generating all these files. If you open up a web browser and you go to accounts.clay.com, and if you haven't set up an account with Clay, you might need to link your Steam ID to your Clay account. Once all that is set up, you're going to want to go to your games. And under Don't Starve Together, you should see an option for game servers. Go ahead and click on that. And this is going to show a list of all cluster tokens that your DST client has recently generated. Feel free to use any of these uh, cluster tokens if you want to add me as an admin to your server. But for our purposes today, we're going to start a brand new server and we're going to call it Jazzy's uh, Local Testing Server. And we're going to click Add New Server. And then if we scroll down, we should see it. Where is it? 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 There we go. Jazzy's Local Testing Server. And we're going to click on Configure Server. And this is going to pull up all the info that we're going to want to fill out, just basic uh, game information. So like we can choose what game mode we want to do. I'm going to do Endless. I'm going to set the max players to 8. And you definitely want to give your game a unique name, so I'm going to call mine Tutorial World. Tutorial. And I'll set the password to, guess what? Tutorial. And once you got all that entered, you just click Download Settings, and it automatically generates a zip file with all of the pre-configured files inside. So I'm going to save that. And then I'm going to open it up and I'm going to extract this to the same folder that contains my other saves. And the easiest way to find this path is to open up your DST client and click on this data folder. And then you'll see all of the game saves for all your different clusters are located right here. So we're going to open up our zip file. We're going to drag my Deddy server folder straight over to this folder. And if you're curious about the pathway here, it's usually documents, then clay, then do not starve together. If you go into my Deddy server, you can get an idea of some of the some of the files that it generates. For example, your cluster token, which is very important, your overall cluster information, and then cluster information for the individual uh, overworld and cave shards. And the cave shard needs a world gen override file just to tell the server that this should be generated as a caves world. 
Okay, now we're going to make an executable program that starts up all of the different servers via Steam command. I'm going to go back up one folder to do not starve together. I'm going to click new, and I'm just going to make a text document for now. We're going to rename it to start DST servers dot BAT. So we're going to make it a batch file. And now we're going to edit this by right clicking. I use notepad, but you could use any text editor to edit it. And now we got to paste some code into this file. The code can be found on the quick setup guide right here. So I'm just going to copy it. I'm going to paste it straight in. Now, uh, you want to check the file path of your Steam command. So remember, I installed mine to the D drive. So I'm just going to change that to D. And I'm going to change this pathway to D. That's it. But once that's all good, you uh, save it, close it. And at this point, it should be pretty much ready to go. Let's double click to start DST servers and see how this goes. Yeah, the dedicated server needs a lot of the game files for the server that is independent from the client that you may have installed on your computer. So it's basically installing another copy of the game that's just going to be used by the dedicated server. All right, and now you should see two windows pop up. One of them is for the overworld shard and one of them's for the cave shard. You see it's generating both worlds right now. Once you see registering master server in US lobby, that means you can probably search for the game at this point. So let's open up our client. Let's go to browse games and you could easily filter out local games by, oh, I gotta turn the previously visited off, but I'm gonna turn connection to LAN and you should be able to see your world. There it is, tutorial world. But yeah, there's your server. Other people can join it now and let's just join just to confirm that we are admin on the server. And that little star next to my name indicates that I am indeed admin, which comes from the cluster token containing your Steam ID. So cool, your server's set up, other people can join, you're basically good to go at this point. Now, one important thing to remember, when, you're, when you want to shut down your server, do not just close these windows. What you want to do, you want to do a C underscore shut down, open and close parentheses on each of the windows. And that'll just make sure that the server saves before shutting down so no data gets corrupted. But yeah, that's basically how you get a server set up on your own computer. I'm going to be making some more guides on dedicated servers. I want to get into how to customize world gen, how to set up and configure mods, and then maybe later we can talk about how to create worlds with multiple shards or how to swap out different cave systems or different overworlds. I'm really excited to get into that. I just recently discovered a lot of this information myself and... Uh, I want to share it with you. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed the guide and I will see you in the next video. Take care.